note. All that is happening um, around us, we can see devastation and and as this at this time we really need to cling together as brethren. So let us pray this morning. Father in heaven, as we gather together this morning to praise your holy name, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning in our right mind. We want to thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. We see the time is at hand, dear Lord, and we know that we need to make our calling and election sure. We need to see you, Lord. We have been praising your holy name. We have been faithful. And please, Lord Jesus, watch over your children. We have to see our families again. We must see our families. That's why we must cling, cling to you, dear Lord, for life. Because you said we will have life more abundant. So help us, Lord Jesus, all who are in this room at this time, to be faithful, to be true, to be prayerful each and every moment of the day and not neglect the coming of the Saviour, not neglect anything that we need to do so that we can keep our garments white and spotless. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for giving me this opportunity to speak, to, to pray to, the, to your people. Help us, Lord Jesus, to stick together because we are your children. Thank you. Praise your name. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Um, okay, uh, we will sing uh, 184, Jesus Paid It All. I'll sing the first verse. Who'll sing the second? I will. Thank you. Who'll sing the third? I will. Thank you. And who'll sing the fourth? I'll take it, sis. Thank you very much. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone. Can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Because nothing could have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I wash my garment white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all, all to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, I lay my trophies down, all down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful song. He washed it white as snow. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yesterday. Um. Just a little recap. Um. Of yesterday. Um. We spoke about the shekel, the, the, the temple shekel, and um. It was said that people came from all different parts of the 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 area. So, um. Money was money different money was coming in and um the the priest wanted to change the money and um because it had a higher value into the temple shekel so they used that money um and and because um the, like the currency is changing all the time you know now we are using plastics um soon there won't be any money at all you know this world currency in one world order they're trying to make one world order so um, everything is changing not just money everything is changing uh, we also spoke about signs and wonders you know um, unless we see signs and wonders we won't believe but that's that's for the unbelievers you know there is signs and we do know the signs but we don't have to wonder because Jesus told us, Jesus told us everything. Uh, we also spoke about, um, you know, members of the church um, are drawing out. People are leaving the church. You know, the same people that exist in Jesus' time exist today. Uh, uh, my sister also spoke about those who's left the church and they've been called names like offshoot and um, break away. Yeah. And the, the preachers are, are not preaching present truth. So it's drawing the members away from them. And, you know, um, it's also said that the leaders remind <laughs> was reminding us of papacy. Yeah. Their standards and their, the righteousness, they, everything is changed. Everything is changed. The complete opposite, you know. Um, they remove everything from from um, God's word. So, um, oh, what else? Oh, and we also spoke about um, the books. Yeah, um, the quality of the books, you know, and God will provide the res resources to buy books. You know, if there's no money, God will provide a way. There's always a way. And um, Ellen G. White, you know, um, nearly died. Um, the, the devil had his hold over her for not writing the great controversy. But God strengthened her, just like how he will strengthen his people. Okay, and also we spoke about um, the 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 preachers, the, the present truthers, Stephen Bohr, um, Doug Batchelor, are not allowed to come and speak to us. You know, we, I never understand why people don't want to know the truth um, because that is what will set us free. But hey, anyway, um, we, will, we will start... Uh, <clears throat> In, is it in three days? Yeah, in three days I will raise it up. Can't remember where we were now. Mm. As referring to the temple at Jerusalem, I think that's where we were. Does anybody remember where we were yesterday? I didn't put any. I've put it up, I think no, that's Christ good. is, yes, Christ is not designed. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll read. Christ did not design that his word should be understood by the unbelieving Jews, nor even by his disciples at this time. He knew that he was, he, he knew they would be misconstrued by his enemies and would be turned against him. At his trial, they would be brought as an 
accusation. And on Calvary, they will be flung at him as a taunt. But to explain them now would give his disciple a knowledge of his suffering and bring upon them sorrow, which as yet they were not able to bear. And an explanation would prematurely disclose to the Jews the result of their prejudice and unbelief. Already they entered upon a path which they would steadily pursue until he should be led as a lamb to the slaughter. For it was for the sake of those who should believe on him that these words of Christ were spoken. He knew that they would be repeated. Being spoken at the Passover, they would come to the ears of thousands and be carried to all parts of the world. After he had be, after he had risen from the dead, their meaning would be made plain. To many, they would be conclusive evidence of his divinity. Okay, we'll stop there. Yes, uh, we can see that um, the Bible would be misinterpreted. You know, Jesus had to protect his word. His word must be protected. You know, the Bible is a thinking man's, the, the Christianity is a thinking man's religion. You know, the word had to be protected. Today we hear different interpretation of the scriptures. You know, um, like I remember going to um, a funeral and they said, the pastor said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that he used that as a um a springboard for you know them going to heaven, people going to heaven. And God didn't want that. That's not what um the word is all about. That's not what the word is about. The the this is the church, yeah, that uses to say they are in heaven. Yet yeah, these words are misconstrued, you know, and this is what the enemy does. Take the words and turn them around to suit themselves, interpret the word of God um, to suit man, to make man feel better in himself, to make man feel that, you know, yes, this is what the word is saying. You know, anyone got any, um, any comments about that? the word taken out of context and that's what that's what that's the most fearful thing is when we take God's word out of context to make it into something that it's not yes and this will be um, a deception in the last days this will be something that you know we can um, we can be lost because of um, of misinterpretation because of misinterpretation We also see um, we can't survive without this book. Without the Bible, we can't survive. It says, where there's no vision, my people perish. Where there's no vision. Um, Mal, Mal, I'm, sh I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Can you go ahead, please? Oh, I think maybe it's me. I'm not sure. No. Okay, thank you, Sister Aline. Yeah, I'm just looking at the sentence which says here, um, at his trial they will be brought in accusation and on Calvary they will, they would be flung at him as a as a taunt. But to explain them now would give his disciple a knowledge of his suffering and bring upon them sorrow, which as yet they were not able to bear. We see the selflessness of Christ. He wasn't thinking about his own suffering. But you can see the love which he had for, for his people, for the disciples. He, would, he didn't want to, for them to, to have that sorrow now. And he's saying they were not, he was able to see that at the stage they are, they are not 
able to bear that sort of uh, uh, that sorrow. So he spared them by not explaining exactly what he meant by in three days I would raise, I would destroy this temple and, and build it up. So he did not give this uh, uh, explanation as he's saying here, an, an explanation that will prematurely disclose to the Jews the result, the result of their prejudice and unbelief. You can see everything that Christ was doing when he came was he never looked at himself. I mean, he was going to go through great suffering and he, and it was even um, in Isaiah 53, he, he read that and he knew that the suffering was going to happen, but he's sparing his disciples from going through it, sparing them from explaining so that, you know, they would hold on. It is, it is with us, you know, we know that um, the suffering which we have been told that um, is going to happen, you know, yes, there will be suffering. We, yes, we are going to face a, a lot of tribulations in the last days and we are facing them. But we know that he is there bearing with us that suffering. He will weigh every suffering before it comes to any one of us to see whether we can, we can bear with it. If it's not, he will not give us. Therefore, whatever suffering which we go through, we know that God has weighed it. And he knows that this child of mine is able now to bear it. Therefore, we should, we should, not, um, we should not despair because we know Christ is always is such a tender, loving shepherd that everything he has to weigh to see whether we are able to carry it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sister Kezia. Yes, um, we will suffer. We will suffer, but um, we God is always there um, showing us that, you know, um, Satan cannot do what God, he has to go through God first before um, he do anything. Just like Job, he had to go to God first before he did anything. Sister Hope, go ahead, please. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Okay, you see, son. Good morning, all. And uh, exactly what Sister Sister Kezia is saying to us, uh, we know that the Sunday law is going to be coming because it's got to do with worship. And we know, indeed, even in Christ's time, He was showing. He 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 met the signs. He showed His character, and He showed. He, he had told them that uh, this temple <laughs> is going to be destroyed and they could not understand. And also as in the times that we are living in, uh, we know as a people in the church that there is a Sunday law coming, but not many will know about the Sunday law. So Christ himself, he lowered, he, he could not say everything at that time because he knew where that was going to take his disciples. Little by little, he was revealing these truths to them so that they may, their faith may be grounded onto what he has said. And indeed, of, of course, he was teaching them. So even us, uh, we don't need to bring the Sunday law straight away unto the people. Let us guide them slowly and truly as indeed we are distributing this book as we do our Bible studies. It's so easy for us to go straight. Oh, you know, the Sunday law is coming. Let us, pre God is showing us by the spirit of the living God. He will guide us. He will give us all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to bring people slowly to understand the manifestation of worship and whom we are going to worship. Because we know that indeed as Christ, they were preparing to kill Christ. They are going to be, a time is going to come 
that even those who have the present truth, the remnant, will indeed be will be drawn to that occasion. They will be taken to, to courts. We shall be taken to courts. But it's not for us to fear. But now, as we know that that is going to happen, let us take the gospel. Let us break the bread of life to these people, slowly but surely. Yesterday, quickly, if I may say, I was, I was traveling and I met this young man. He's always been in the community and we're trying to get to him, you know, trying to get his, he said he was 50. But it's amazing because now he's beginning to see things. I don't know how, but God knows how. God knows how. He, now he was beginning to talk about the, the laws that are changing. He talked about the Sunday law. And I'm going, hang on a minute. This was the man who was, rejecting the message. Now, somehow, somewhere, someone is breaking the bread of life slowly. And we thank God for that. So may we also, uh, as God has given us the mandate to preach, to teach, to bring all these things, uh, uh, to, teach, to, to bring these words to people, to be mindful of people's faith, because it's so easy to jump in and not let others grow slowly as the Spirit leads them to Calvary, at Calvary. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Hope. You know, speaking to um, people about um, the gospel, yes, and it's so true. We, we, wanted, we want them to come to Jesus, but feeding them slowly is, is a good thing. You know, speaking to a lot of people, um, and you, you ask, they, they tell you what the mark of the beast is. They take, they tell you what um, the ch the chip in in your forehead is. They tell you what they think they they think it is. But you know, you it is slowly, slowly that you have to feed these people. Sister Rhoda, go ahead, please. Um, yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, I was going to say. Um, talking about things being slowly changed. We can we can see that this is truly the battle of the mind so that our minds can be diverted um, in order for us to accept these things. Because when you look, look at the, before people spoke about the Sunday law, the calendars were changed. Years ago, um, they slowly put... Uh, Sunday as the Sabbath on the calendars. They never said anything to anyone, but that when people looked at the calendar, you know, you think, oh, yes, Sunday is the Sabbath. But then you say, wait a minute. No, it was never like that. And then now there's more and more of the calendars. So you see it's the battle of the mind so that your mind can be um, used to the to Sunday being Sabbath. And so many things have slowly been shown us to say, no, th this is not the right way. And, and, and um, yeah, I was going to say, um, because these things are slowly coming to each and every one of us. And even uh, taking the word out there to the people even sometimes you uh, you you think to yourself why why can't they see what's going on but as uh, sister hope said you know the holy spirit is surely speaking to to the to the people and now more and more because even this um lgbt um thing that has uh, now taken over the whole world it was there even in the time of old but it was hidden you know it wasn't at the forefront but now these things have come because you you get used to it um, to say oh yeah you know uh, these things have been there and this and that but now when it comes to the forefront that's when you say you wake up and think yeah you know it was hidden but now they are showing us what is going on, but it's been taking years and years, slowly, slowly, these things are, uh, Christ is showing us that these things were there, um, that man's heart was always evil, 
and now it come to the forefront because the devil knows that he's got a, a short time. So he's bombarding all everyone with the with the things that were were were, were there. And it's hard to take it in. Some some people think, ah, oh, but you know what's going on, what's going on? But it's been there, slowly making your mind to adjust to to these lifestyles and all that they but now when when people see this they sort of like get shocked to say but what's going on but it's been there thank you thank you sister Rhoda yes it's always been there Sodom and Gomorrah has always been there what goes around comes around you know it's not anything there's nothing new under the sun you know people will see and um and try to dumb things down and water things down. But we know the truth. And, you know, the truth is there and it's staring in your face. Sister Dorothy, go ahead, please. Thank you, Sister Lenin. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful comments that have gone before me. So beautiful study. And, you know, as, as the Elder Dana mentioned yesterday, that members should hold their ministers um, accountable for, for suppressing the truth from going out. We all know that we were raised to preach the first, the second, and the third angel's messages. And let us open our eyes and really see the darkness that has come in the church because God's people there is a scripture somewhere on where I put there on the chat. It's very long. I won't read it. But it says there, mm -hmm. it says, allow me to go back there. It says that the priests, the prophets, um, yeah, the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof, from the least of them even unto the greatest of them? Everyone is given to covetousness, and from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone delayed falsely. They have healed also the heart of the daughter of my people. Slightly saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Now, when we have these ministers who are like dumb dogs and they cannot bark and they are preaching to us, you know, it's sleeping preachers preaching to a sleeping church. You know, we read these things and we, we go through them as if it is not us. I know for myself, I know I'm experiencing it in my local church. And if we do not speak, the Lord has told us to speak. The Lord has told us to hold them accountable. When we see these things, we ask God for wisdom, how to go about it. Because you see, there is this fear that, oh, don't, you know, touch the anointed. Yes, these ministers, they, they are working for God. And that kind of sends fear to us as if, we are to accept everything. And I believe that when we pray, God will show us what to speak against and what not to speak against. This is serious because if we remain in this darkness, we will not follow the Lamb wherever he goeth. We will not follow Christ to the most holy place in the sanctuary. This unto 2300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. This message has been silenced. You hardly hear anyone talking about it. I think I think the only time I I used to I heard it in my previous church was when our beloved elder Chitate would come from afar to come and preach it. And now it's like the few people who would bring these messages to us. They are so far away, 
and sometimes it's difficult to call them and many a times the churches don't even want to invite them. We've seen current news what is going on with Pastor Doug Bachelor and and Pastor Stephen Bo. The people who were instrumental uh, for me uh, knowing the Sabbath and God's remnant church, which is really sad. So when the truth is being hindered from within, the people don't have the truth and darkness hovers over God's church. And this is serious because this, but we, if we are not ready and we have not familiarized ourselves with the first and the second angel's messages, we are told that we will not be able to give the third. So how can we give the third cry after the Sunday law if no one has made us aware of the first and the second angel's messages? Many have rejected the sanctuary message and therefore darkness is over, hovered over God's church. This is serious. We need to pray. And where we can be a voice to raise our voices and demand the truths be brought before the people, lest God's people perish. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. People will perish for lack of knowledge. And you know, um they decided to kill Jesus. Um, they put their mind to it. Yes, they said Jesus had to die. Yeah, and they wanted to do it before the Passover. And everything they did was illegal. Just like how they're trying to do it to us now. Everything that they're doing is illegal. But because of um, how strong they are in, in whatever it is that they're doing, we don't have a voice. It's it's like we don't have a voice. Um, but yes, we we ought to speak out. We ought to speak out because if we're walking in dark, if we're listening to the preachers and they preach in darkness and they're not preaching the truth, we and we're following them. We are following them into perdition. We're going the same direction as they are, and it's not um, it's no one's fault but our own. So we need to really speak out. Sister Dorothy, you still got your hand up? Oh, sorry, that's an old hand. And I just uh, I just think, uh, allow me to just quickly yes, say, that... this thing is really serious because there was a, um, a pastor says he's teaching children, young people, um, the Bible. And then no one else in the afternoon, no one else is allowed to come in. And then somebody is asked to stand at the door to ensure nobody comes in. And these are children. What is he teaching them? We need to open our eyes because this minister, do we, you know, people, people, um, people, Satan uses people like this to bring his message to young people and teach them all kinds of abominations. And I believe this is why we are seeing craziness in churches where youth are doing crazy things because the ministers, they water the gospel and they want to bring excitement to them about music and about all kinds of abominations. And then before we know it, you know, Satan is at work fully blown, you know, abominations that we are seeing is because we as members, we love to have it so. We love to have it so because if we do not speak, they will continue to do so. Why would a minister hold a special Bible study for young people without anyone? The parents are not allowed inside. No one is allowed. The door is shut. So when we just give them the power to have that authority to say things and we can't question. I have said it, don't question it. If you question it, you are critical, you are you 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 know you are against the authority of the church and and then you 
almost being driven out. The troublemaker will be slow. They will push you out. They will harass you. This is bullying and harassment in churches. And we shouldn't give them that power. Members pay the ministers to do the work that they do. If they are not delivering, just like any other job out there, they should be put out. Members should speak and pray and speak up until the minister either changes and if he doesn't change, he shouldn't be working. Why should he be paid if he's not working? Yes, um, you know, when you're speaking about the parents, um, the the pre the pastors are taking the children and preaching to the children and none of the parents are there. Where are the parents? You know, I wouldn't let my child go into um, any Bible study with a with a with a um, an adult male and no adults are there. No, no, the parents are to take responsibility too. Yeah, um, and and to do that, to for a minister to do that, where are the elders? Where are where where is everyone? You know, that's that's totally wrong. Totally wrong. Uh, Sister Angela, go ahead, please. Good morning, dear sisters and brethren. Uh, yes, I have a prayer prayer request in Germany. Um, in our official um, magazine, they are promoting the LGBT. And I don't know how it is in England or in Great Britain. And in Denmark, they had a discussion at the annual meeting in May about this, and they will work on it. Really, you have to be very um, prayerful that the Lord will be done. But happily in Germany, there is a, a region and a part of our church, the southwestern part, they want to do something against this with the LGBT movement, and I'm very glad about it. Can't you pray for them? Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Angela. Yes, prayers are always needed for for those um, people and those um, those lifestyle that they are taking on. Yes, thank you all. Any more comments? Okay, um, can somebody read from, I keep losing my place. It's on the screen because of this. <laughs> okay, thank you. Can someone read that for us, please? Thank you. Did we read the paragraph above it? No, I don't think we did. It yeah, was it for the sake of it. Yeah, okay. I'll read. It was for the sake of those who should believe on him that these words of Christ were spoken. He knew that they would be repeated. Being spoken at the Passover, they would come to the ears of thousands and be carried to all parts of the world. After he had risen from the dead, their meaning would be made plain. To many, they would be conclusive evidence of his divinity. Because of their spiritual darkness, even the disciples of Jesus often failed of comprehending his lessons. But many of these lessons were made plain to them by subsequent events when he walked no more with them. His words were a stay to their hearts. Shall I continue? Yes, please. Okay. As referring to the temple at Jerusalem, the Savior's words, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up, had a deeper meaning than the hearers perceived. Christ was the foundation and life of the temple. Its services were typical of the sacrifice of the Son of God. The priesthood was established to represent the mediatorial character and work of Christ. The entire plan of sacrificial worship was a, was a foreshadowing of the Savior's death to redeem the world. There would be no efficacy in these offerings when 
the great event toward which they had pointed for ages was consummated. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. Any comments? Sorry, yeah, I was trying to unmute. Yes, thy words have I hidden in my heart. You know, Jesus, Jesus, um, we're walking in, in, in um, spiritual darkness. Yeah, even the disciples often fail to comprehend his lessons. There is so much lessons to be had. But we are, um, there's so much in the world that's taken away our, our thinking um, and all the events that are coming upon on, on us at this time. We can't see um, what we're supposed to see because of the things that man has put in front of us. Man has taken, trying to take away God's word out of, out of everything, out of schools, um, even churches. The, the, as we can see that the message is being watered down so um the meaning of 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 the word of god is being watered as 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 sister dorothy says you know that they they try to dumb down the word of god any comments I like where it says, oh, sorry. Carry on, Sister Dorothy. I like where it says that this work about the temple was about him. It says there, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. It had a deeper meaning than the hearers perceived. I just want to stop there and say that when we read the word of God, we should dig deeper so that we can get the meaning of what Christ is saying to us, lest we miss the essence, the substance, the meaning of his word. You know, it had a deeper meaning than the hearers perceived. Christ was the foundation and life of the temple. So again, we still linger at the temple because it's the temple that is about Christ. The whole plan of salvation is centered there in the in the temple and its services. And when Christ came, then the type met uh, anti-type and we ourselves today we are to do exactly the same. Understand the sanctuary message. Understand the work of Christ in the most holy place in the sanctuary. And if we do not open ourselves or place ourselves in a in the right place to hear these messages, our hearts will also be darkened. Like these people, we will not understand because we are not following Christ uh, where He is and His sacred work, which He is doing on behalf of us. So we are to. Uh, we are to understand, to know the truth. You see, when we, when we allow people, we, when we allow ministers to slight the work of Christ in the most holy place, that is total darkness. And it's important because it's about our salvation. Is at risk. We are in danger. It is, it is like, it's like a booby trap. You know, when you walk into a booby trap, you get trapped. I don't know whether any of us remember uh, who come from the, 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 the Africa where people used to, to make like traps. If you put your finger there <laughs> in the wrong place, you're caught. You are caught. This is a spiritual booby trap where these, these ministers who are hindering this work they are creating a dangerous booby, uh, uh, a trap for God's people. And we will perish. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. And 
if it concerns our salvation, why should we why we should should we love to allow it to continue? You see, so I think we should pray more, even for them that are in this darkness. We should pray more for us that the Lord will open our eyes. Even here, we may think that we we are so enlightened and we have the whole truth. But unless we ourselves eat of that bread and follow Christ, we will also be darkened. We should be satisfied by these studies alone. We should study privately. Take a book with you wherever you go. If you are on the bus, if you are on the train, take a book. Spirit of prophecy, let us read. We can We've got no excuse. Let us prepare for the second coming of Christ. With technology, you can you can listen audio listening. When you're in the kitchen cooking, you can listen to the word of God. May your minds be uh, drawn to Christ because the truth here is the danger. When Christ walked with these with this, when they, they, with these people, they saw his his divinity. It was there was so much evidence, but yet, even though Christ in person was was among them, these people still remained in darkness. How fearful! And for us today, the truth, precious truth that we have, we have no excuse to remain in darkness. Pray for me because. I am guilty of wasting time. I'm guilty of taking my eyes off Jesus. And I, 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 I don't want, I shouldn't be fearful. I should, if we do the right thing, we have nothing mm -hmm. to fear. May God help mm -hmm. each and every one of us. Thank you. Amen. I would also like to say something that is, I think one part is um, that our minds are darkened because we are dwelling on earthly things. Ellen White is very clear about it. And also these pastors, surely there is a agenda behind some of them. Let's pray for them. And many, for example, who have been studying at New World, they don't know otherwise. And therefore, prayers are very essential. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Dorothy. Thank you, Sister Angela. Yes, it's so true. Um, a lot of the, uh, some of the pastors don't know the message. So if they don't know the message, they won't preach the message. Um, and also they won't have other people coming into the church to preach the message. You know, people are sitting and being fanned, fanned to, to sleep. As my sister says, they, it's a lullaby. They've been, um, you know, and remember, Satan comes to church too. He comes to church with his message, and his message is for us not to hear anything. So, you know, um, we ought, we ought to um, wake up out of our sleep and don't remain in the darkness. You know, Sister Dorothy said about she's guilty of wasting time, and 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 I think. I can say the same thing too. Sometimes, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the kitchen, and your mind is so far away. You're you're thinking about all manner of things apart from spiritual things, and we ought to get back to that. Save the Lord. Thank you for your comments. Any more comments? Yes, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Because we have to look unto Jesus that we will be changed into his image. Amen. Amen. Yes, we will be changed unto his image. You know, by rejecting Christ, we seal our own destiny. If we reject him. Thank you. Um... Okay, since the world ritual, um, somebody like to read that, please. Uh, 
Okay, I'll read. Since the whole ritual economy was symbolic of Christ, it had no value apart from him. When the Jew, when the Jews sealed their rejection of Christ by delivering him to death, they rejected all that gave significance to the temple and its service. Its sacredness had departed. It was doomed to destruction. From that day, superficial sacrificial offering and the service connected with them were meaningless. Like the offering of Cain, they did not express faith in the Saviour. In putting Christ to death, the Jews virtually destroyed the temple. When Christ was crucified, the inner veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, signifying that the great final sacrifice had been made and that the system of sacrificial offering was forever at an end. In three days, I will raise it up. In the Saviour's death, the powers of darkness seemed to prevail and they exulted in the victory. But the rent sepulchre of Joseph, Jesus came forth a conqueror, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. By virtue of his death and resurrection, he became the minister of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Men rear the Jewish tabernacle, Sorry, men reared the Jewish tabernacle, men build the Jewish temple, but the sanctuary above, of which the earthly was a type, was built by no human architect. Behold, the man whose name is the branch. He shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the, vic the glory, and shall sit and rule upon the throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. Amen. Any comments? What? Our lamb died to save us. He went to the cross to save us. You know, he, he's a conqueror. You know, nothing can hold Jesus down darkness, nothing, you know, he's our conquering king, you know, and as I said, by rejecting Christ, you know, we seal our own destiny, yeah, Christ came and delivered what he came here to deliver, so we ought to look to ourselves, and what are we giving him back while he gave his life for us, what do we give him back, any comments please? I'm not sure I understand what it means by behold the man whose name is the branch. Anybody can? Not sure. So the go ahead. The branch is Christ. The branch is Christ. Behold the man. It's the man is Christ. Mm. The branch is Jesus. I can't remember the scripture oh, to okay. back that up, but that is what it is. Okay. And uh, may I say something in regard to this? John 15, verse 5. I am the wine and you are the branches. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you mute me, please? Thank you. Thank you, um, Sister Angela and Sister Dorothy. Yes, Jesus is the branch. And yes, we must behold him. We must behold the things that he has done for us. He has brought us to Calvary and we can sit at his feet. We can hear him. We can see him. You know, they are those who, who, who were with Christ and they believed. They didn't believe. What about us who cannot see Christ? 
but believe. It, that's that's beautiful. I like that. Any comments? Yes, it is in this way. I think really we have to be connected with Christ because he says, I am the branch and you, no, I am the vine and you are the branches. Uh, I have to find my Bible um, because this is very important because it is only with a living connection to Jesus Christ um, that we can do his work. I have to find it in John 5 verse 15. Can you hear me? Because I was not talking so loud. Yes, we can hear you. I have just to find the, the verse. Now I'm reading from the new international version. Normally I take the authorized King James version. Um, John 15, what was it? 5.15 or 15.5? No, it is 5.15, I think. It's, but it's here, John, John 15. Well, John 15. Yeah, John 15, verse 1, 2, 3, and 5. Yes, I'm, I am having it. It's now the New International Version. I am the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And we really need this because uh, I'm having so many crazy ideas. Mm. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. And now for verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And when we are not abiding in him, this is verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. And Jesus has said, I can't do anything without the Father. He was telling the words of the Lord or the Father, and he was doing the works because he was connected with the Father. Thank you, Sister Angela. Thank you for that. Um explanation um sister kezia i think that is sister kezia yes thank you sister adin i just wanted to read this um uh sentence by virtue of his death and resurrection he became the minister of the true tabernacle which the lord pitched and not man hebrews 8 verse 2 this is a very powerful um uh, explanation of when Jesus, where Jesus is right now um, as the minister, as the uh, high priest in the Holy of Holies interceding on our part. You know, um, some of uh, people who are in the Adventist are re rejecting the um, the message about the 144,000 uh, sorry, the 1844, um, they are rejecting that message. The sanctuary message is being trodden down. You hardly hear in the church um, a, any preaching on the sanctuary message because, uh, because of 1844. Yet here we are clearly told that when he, when he, we resurrected, he went into the holy, holy, holy place and in 1844 that is when he actually went into the holy of holies therefore when you reject the uh, sanctuary message you are denying the the ministration of christ in the holy of holies that means you uh, you are not admitting that he is there to atone your sin we are also denying that you know, we are living in the days of atonement and the sixth trumpet. We are denying all that, and it just makes the whole gospel, you know, it's just there to water down the the role of Christ and what he's doing right now. Thank you.
yes that's true if we if you know as a people as um especially seventh day adventists because um 1844 was born out of um seven day adventures seven day adventures were born out of 1844 and if we don't know the um sanctuary message in 1844 then we really are not believing um that christ is in the holy the most holy place and um we don't know where he is um at this time and into we are living in the sixth seal. We've been living in the sixth seal for 179 years, I think it is. And, you know, we ought to know, as I said before, um, Seventh-day Adventist is a thinking man's um, religion, and we ought to know dates. Dates are very important. Okay, thank you. It's now 630 Sister Kezia, can you give us a closing prayer? Thank you, each and every one, for your comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much this morning for allowing us to gather and to learn from you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, which has been our teacher, Lord, as we asked, we thank you for using Sister Arlene, Lord, to bring this message to us. We thank you for the spirit of, of prophecy, which uh, illuminates your word, the lesser light, making us understand your life. And Lord, we can see your life and we can study. And Lord, we want to thank you for these precious studies so that we can we are able to see what is happening around us lord you are giving us eyes self to wash our eyes so and giving us understanding through the power of the holy spirit lord i pray that lord you will continue to protect our platform the prayer ministry um, platform, Lord, so that we can continue to study. And Lord, let it not be just an intellectual study, but I pray that, Lord, each and everything that we are studying, we will leave the truth. We will run with it and we will believe and have faith, Lord, in you, grounded in everything so that we are not shaken with all sorts of doctrines which are thrown into our way. We thank you, Lord, for, for the truth, because the truth will sanctify us, as you said in your word. And Lord, we know that uh, today is a, is a very solemn day for this group, Lord, as we are, as the, we are going to be putting Sister uh, Chitati's body to rest. And Lord, we pray that you will be with every proceeding that is going to take place. And we pray that everything will work according to plan, Lord. We pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort to the family, especially to Elder Chitate and the children. We pray that, Lord, we you remind us that because of sin, death came to us. And Lord, that we prepare, that we don't know also when we are going to be laid to rest. Maybe, Lord, you, as you say, that you will put many of us to sleep, that we should always be prepared for your second coming, because we know that our sister, the next thing, it will be the resurrection. And we pray, and we know that, Lord, she will be among the first resurrection, because she was working for you. We could see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in her life. Therefore, Lord, I thank you so much this, this morning as we put everything in your, in your hands. May we mourn with people with hope. May we, may we be encouraged that, Lord, to take on the button of, of uh, what Sister Chitate was doing. And also, Lord, to just... Listen to you and to do your work, to work and to pray and to watch, Lord, so that, Lord, this we are not caught out by surprise in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for everything. 
I pray all these things in the precious truth of your name, Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sister Kezia, for your beautiful prayer. Now I'll hand back over to the platform party. Thank you each and every one for your